Hi friends, I'm Nicholas Sacciani. Let's talk backstage. <laughs> in this video, I want to talk about breaking down a script into the beats of a scene. A play is generally split up into acts, and those acts are then split up into scenes. Now, the scenes can be split up even further into what we call beats. And when you're working as an actor or director, one of the first things that you want to do is find those beats of each scene. Now, when I'm talking about the beats of a scene, I'm not talking about the ones that are written into the script, where in parentheses, it says beat between the lines. Those are there to act as a punctuation to the dialogue and are used in specific points of the script as a tool of the playwright to get their point across to make that line hit harder or maybe to represent some unsaid moment. So written beats are timing and you're stopping for a certain amount of time, usually it's a second or two, and then you move on with the rest of the scene. Those aren't necessarily what I'm talking about when I'm talking about breaking down a scene into beats. The beats of a scene that I'm talking about refers to the emotional arc or the intention of what is being talked about or what is being done in the scene and they change when that subject changes. Say you have two people on stage and they are deep in conversation about something. Maybe it was the football game last night, the soccer game. Maybe it's about their newest celebrity crush. Suddenly someone new comes into the scene and the subject of what they're talking about changes to add in that new person. That person that came in created a new beat. The subject that we were talking about before was the old beat. The new beat is what we're talking about now. Generally, that's the easiest thing to figure out when beats happen are when people come in or leave a scene because generally in life, when people come in and leave, what we're talking about, our personal intentions, what we're doing changes to adjust for that person. Now, it's not always the case that someone coming in is going to change the beat. Say it's a class lecture and you have a kid that's coming in late. The teacher who is talking about the subject and that is the focus of the scene, that might not change because someone came in. Now, if the focus is on that kid coming in and everyone's attention moves to him, the teacher's still talking and ignoring that, but your focus as the audience is supposed to be on the kid coming in and maybe another kid kid talking to him, the subject that we are watching as the audience, what we're following has changed. And you don't necessarily have to have someone come in at all to change the beat. Just take this video. I started out introducing myself and the topic. Then I defined what beats were. And then I started giving examples. Each of those was its own beat. You might have two people sitting there discussing superheroes. Say they're talking about Captain America and all of his powers and what he can do. Then one of them mentions Thor. No one new has come into the scene, but he's changing the topic. He's changing the hero that they're talking about. Suddenly that first person decides to start a debate between the two about which superhero is better. That discussion has had three beats. We talked about Captain America, then we talked about Thor, and then we started talking about the two of them together. The two of them together as in debating their powers, not as in like they're together. I chip it. So how about an action sequence? Say you have two knights on stage and they're in the middle of a duel. Nobody is saying anything, but they're fighting back and forth. One knight definitely has the upper hand and he is winning the fight. But suddenly that second knight gets his second wind and he starts beating down that first knight. And then maybe that first knight, he stabs that second knight, which causes the second knight to drop his sword and fall to the ground. And the fighting stops as the second knight is holding his wound. So within that, you've had a couple beats. The first knight winning, then the second knight winning. Those are two separate beats. When that dynamic dynamic changes, that is the change in the beat. And then when that first knight stabs the second knight and the second knight falls and the fighting stops, that's the change in a beat again and you have a third one. Ultimately, a beat is an occurrence that changes into something else. The scene might be that fight, but you have separate different parts of that fight within the scene. So actors use beats all the time. They use it to frame out their monologues, their scenes. It helps them to really figure out their emotional arc, how they are going to act out this scene. Because if you are just constantly getting the same amount of excited or the same amount of sad for everything, it's dull. We call that one note. You don't have peaks and valleys. The actors will know their own beats because that's their tool to do their job. As a director, you need to know the beats of the entire show because that is the map to the emotional core of the show. You need to be able to tell an actor, great, that excitement level was a 10 here. There's a scene coming up in 20 pages where you have to be at a 10. You have to have more excitement than you do right now. So we need to bring the current excitement down to like an eight or a seven. If you don't know the beats, you don't know that's coming up. So you want to be able to be sure you know what you're talking about so you can, where an actor is creating the peaks and valleys in their own performance, as a director, you have to do that for the entire play. Now, how about on the design side? Because as a director, you're not just using these beats to inform how you're working with the actors. You're using it to inform what you're doing with the designers as well, because each beat is like a map to a moment in the play. When Romeo is holding Juliet in that final moments before he takes the poison for her, that moment 
with her in the tomb, that's an important moment in the show. So you need to be able to have your talk to your set designer to create a scenic unit that really emphasizes that, that they can be the focus of the set. It's a family tomb, so there would be her ancestors buried down there too. You don't necessarily want to see that because then she's going to blend into the background. You just want to see where she's buried. With the same thing with the lighting and the sound. Say you have a general giving his epic speech to rally the troops. The actor can definitely emphasize that and take what they're saying and make it this epic speech. But how about putting a soundtrack underneath that? And each beat of the monologue, that soundtrack underneath, it's more and more epic building up the speech. So you take what the actor's doing and you elevate it. The same thing with lighting. You can focus down on what a person is, where they are. So you just see them on stage. You just highlight them in a specific moment. And knowing these beats means that you know all of the moments. Where a moment hits, a moment might crescendo and build, and how it might ebb and pull back, and will inform any imagery or any feelings that I want the play to have when we finally put it on stage. Knowing the beats and navigating each, and knowing how one flows to the next, lets you as the director breathe life into the play and get to its heart and soul. You're trying to affect the audience, and this is how. So that's all I have on beats. Hopefully you learned something, and I will see you next time. Bye friends! These videos videos are made for educational purposes. Hopefully you learn something or reinforce something you may already know. Now, this is just one way to do this, and there may be other ways to do what I've explained in this video, and I would love to hear about those ways in the comments. Just remember to be kind as you share your own experiences and expertise on the subject. And if you like this video, give me a thumbs up, like, and subscribe, and hit that little bell button to be notified of the next video.